Department of Health and Human Services has announced a plan to speed up the approval of biosimilar generic drugs and a plan to try and help lower health care costs. Joining us right now with the details is FDA Commissioner Dr. Marty McCary. And Dr. McCary, thank you for being with us today. Let, let's talk through what you guys are talking or what, what you are uh, doing at this point. Um, how's it going to help? Well, good morning, Becky and Andrew. So uh, the fastest area of growth of healthcare spending in the United States is drug price inflation. And the fastest area of drug price inflation is an expensive new class of medications called biologics. These are complex molecules. They're not small molecules. They are often derived and produced from a cell line in a laboratory, so there's a higher cost. They are about 5% of medications uh, right now and a, more than half the cost of drugs. And so uh, the good news is there is a generic version that we call a biosimilar. But the problem is that there's been a lot of red tape and a lot of difficulty for biosimilar manufacturers to bring these uh, med medications to market uh, because there's been a five to eight year development process where the FDA has required sometimes these companies to go out and do comparative studies. We're saying now that we're going to require a smaller set of studies called PK studies. We don't require uh, small molecule generic companies to go back and do uh, giant clinical trials. And so we're no longer going to require that on a routine basis for biosimilars. And the goal is to bring more biosimilars to market. For, and, and Becky, uh, as you know, I practiced uh, surgery and, and cancer uh, care at Johns Hopkins for 22 years. I've seen these medications these uh, do wonders. They're amazing. Autoimmune conditions for uh, rare conditions, for uh, individuals with cancer, for uh, transplant recipients. It's an amazing class of medication. Uh, but when it's not affordable, it doesn't work at all. The efficacy is zero. And so the idea is to get more on the market so they're more affordable and there's more competition. We've had 76 approved uh, since the first one 10 years ago. We should probably be at two or 300. And so we're going to cut that uh, time to bring a biosimilar to market in half from five to eight years down wow. to two and a half to five years. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, particularly if it's cutting red tape, um, trying to, I guess, reinvent the wheel and prove this stuff that's already been proven to a large extent. Uh, I, I would guess you're getting some pushback from the industry, the drug companies that have come up with the originals because red tape benefits them. They probably want to protect their investment. And I, I, I guess I would wonder what this does to innovation. Will it threaten um, those companies that do the initial spend with with maybe they are less likely to take on the big risk to develop some of these? Well, there's still a massive treasure chest for any company that can bring a biologic that works to market. Uh, the market exclusivity is a long period of time and averages 12 years. And so we're still going to see tremendous innovation. We have a new program at the FDA that gets decisions out in weeks instead of a year. We have a lot of incentives, especially for domestic manufacturing. So uh, we're still going to see a lot of innovation in the biologic space, and we need that. We want to see that. But uh, if you look at the story of Humira, one of the most common biologics that has been out, it took another seven years after Humira came off patent for a generic equivalent that is a biosimilar to come to market. And when there was just one biosimilar that came to market seven years uh, later, you didn't really see the price change that much. There was almost an, Im an implied price collusion. So we want to see more biosimilars come to market. Once there were three biosimilars that came to market to compete with Humira, you really started to see prices go down and lowering drug pricing prices significantly, that is, uh, to get them down to a fraction of what the branded uh, patent price is, is a massive priority for President Trump. We're doing it through most favored nation status pricing. Mm -hmm. We're doing it through allowing people to bypass PBMs and go direct to the manufacturers. Uh, drug yeah. companies love that, and that's a, right. an opportunity to save. Another thing the drug companies have liked is this priority review vouchers that they can apply for. I mean, these are pretty new, but I think you've gotten a pretty strong response from the industry. This is basically promising that you're going to do a fast review of these drugs, again, cutting out some of the, the red tape that slows things down. That's right, Becky. You know, I want to see the FDA convert from being in a receive-only mode to being very proactive 
and partnering with companies because we want to see more cures and meaningful treatments for the American people. That is one of our big goals. And so we can do that. We can partner with industry and yet keep our review impeccably scientifically independent. So, for example, Becky, we just uh, announced nine recipients of this new priority review voucher program that gets a decision out in weeks instead of a year. We're going to announce another batch uh, in the next several weeks, and we're going to keep going. One of those vouchers that we announced uh, came just uh, 10 days after a New England Journal of Medicine article showing that a new gene therapy for a certain type of congenital deafness in children uh, resulted in essentially a cure in three out of 12 of them, and another seven had significant improvement. When we heard about that study, wow. we went to the company and we issued a voucher to get a decision out in weeks. And I'm personally, Becky, going to the scientific reviewers at the FDA, and I'm asking them, are you seeing anything that looks amazing, anything that just looks like a game changer? And if so, let's call the company. Let's talk about cutting the red tape and the idle time <clears throat> because we all want the same thing. We want to see a treatment for neurodevelopmental and neurodegenerative disorders. We want to see treatments for certain types of cancers. We want to see cures. We want to see a treatment for PTSD. And, and so we're going to do that by being proactive, and that's our new approach. I mean, Marty, that's great to hear. Um, are there ways that maybe small companies can get their way through? What do they have to do to raise their hand to say, hey, um, we've got some great results. Take a look at us, too. So the initial, uh, uh, initial priority review vouchers were issued to a diverse range of companies from uh, those uh, treating rare conditions, which is a huge priority in this administration, to uh, uh, drugs that treat pancreatic cancer, one of the most common forms of cancer uh, in the United States today. Uh, we also are advocating for Congress to pass the Pediatric Priority Review Voucher Program. That takes the review down to six months. We're trying a pilot to get our decisions out in weeks. Now, look, I, I don't know if it's going to work. It's so far, we went through the first one. It worked beautifully. But we're going to have to try new things if we're going to challenge this notion. Why does it take 10 to 12 years for a new drug to come to market? As a physician, we would hear about these amazing, promising therapies, something with early results in animal studies right. or early phase two. And we would wonder, like, when can we offer these to our patients? So that's why we're trying radically new things like this priority review to get a decision out in weeks.